Finding a new gaming monitor, it can be tough. There's a ton of features, options, sizes, and even shapes, which if you're not up to speed on all the new terms, you'll likely feel confused. But what if you're just looking for the best gaming experience possible? Well, I think I found it. What is up guys, my name is Tyler, and today I would like to show you what I think could be the best 4K gaming monitor. This is the Samsung Odyssey G8 Neo, a 32-inch 4K 240Hz gaming monitor, and quite frankly, is the best monitor I've ever owned. For reference, I upgraded to the G8 from an LG 27GN950B, which back in 2021 was one of the hottest 4K monitors to hit the market. Well, unfortunately, that monitor started to die, so I began looking for a replacement. If you guys remember a while back, I reviewed the Alienware AW3423DW, which was an incredible 34-inch quantum dot OLED display. And in that video, I teased that I had another monitor, and that monitor is the G8 Neo. If you want to check out that video, I'll have it linked up here somewhere, because the AW3423DW is probably the best 1440p monitor I've ever used. Now. For starters, the G8 Neo is a 32-inch 16x9 4K curved panel. It uses mini LEDs, which allows it to get to a peak brightness of nearly 2,000 nits, giving it an HDR10 plus rating, not to mention the fact that it has a max refresh rate of 240 hertz at the full 4K resolution, which if you ask me, is just nuts. Just like my cat running around the house right now, she's also nuts because she just ate. I honestly can't think of a title I play regularly that will even run at 4K at over 200 frames per second. I mean, maybe League of Legends, but who needs to play League at 4K 240? I'm still gonna be hard stuck gold regardless. Now, before we get too far into this, I wanna preface this with the fact that obviously the best monitor is going to depend on your budget, setup, and the games you like to play. For me, I play a lot of League of Legends, Starfield, Star Citizen, Forza, and occasionally some party games with friends. Basically, mostly single player titles. Uh, generally, as a gamer, I prefer quality over performance, which means I will gladly play a single player title at 45 to 60 FPS in order to get more detail and fidelity rather than play at 200 or 300 frames per second and crush my quality into the ground. I also don't play esports titles outside League, so I have no need for anything higher than 120 hertz, which for the record is actually what I set the G8 Neo to, as I notice it feels a lot smoother when pairing it with my two other 120 hertz displays, which by the way, if you aren't rocking the TIE Fighter setup, you're doing it wrong. Shout out to my friend George for the recommendation. I'll leave a link in the description for the monitor mount that I use in case you want to TIE Fighter your setup like I did. Uh, one quick note about 240 hertz at 4K. If you decide to crank the G8 Neo to its max 240 hertz refresh rate at 4K, you'll notice that some colors have lines through them. This isn't something that was extremely noticeable, but once I noticed it, I couldn't unsee it. It made some colors look blocky and almost over sharpened, which bothered me. As far as I'm aware, this is due to how the display refreshes itself at that resolution, so it's unfortunately not something you can change or fix unless you drop the refresh rate back down to 144 or 120, which in my opinion, is plenty for most titles unless you're an esports fanatic, in which case I wouldn't recommend a 4K monitor, period. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about that panel a little bit more. Samsung is well known for their displays and their Odyssey G-Series displays are no exception. The G8 Neo, like I mentioned, is 32 inches, which I find to be the sweet spot these days for 16 by nine displays. It's just big enough that you feel immersed without being so big that it feels like sitting in front of a TV, which means it still comfortably fits on a desk or a conventional monitor stand. Now I will say, this panel is much heavier than most panels I've used, so you will need to make sure your monitor mount can hold up to at least 20 pounds because without the included stand, the G8 Neo weighs just over 15 pounds. Trust me, the last thing you wanna do is buy a monitor and find out it's too heavy for your existing stand. Ask me how I know. The panel is also rocking Samsung's Quantum Mini LED backlight technology, which is a bunch of words that don't really matter because all you need to know is that this monitor uses very small LEDs, which means it has way more dimming zones than any other kind of LCD display. This means you'll generally see more contrast, which for me personally looks the best, especially in cinematic games. Mini LED also means this monitor is bright as fuck, like almost too bright, and quite frankly, might be too bright for some of you who are sensitive to bright displays. As mentioned in the intro, the G8 Neo can pump out an insane HDR 2000 nit peak brightness, which 
is as bright as the new iPhone 15 Pro. The difference is that the iPhone is 6.7 inches and the G8 Neo is 32 inches and likely isn't being used outside, so the intensity is a bit jarring, especially in HDR supported games in a dark room. Now, Windows has its own let me make it HDR for you setting, but sometimes it can make highlights in games just pure white, which can ruin some details and in some cases like in Star Citizen can even be blinding when the sun hits your eyes, so I recommend keeping that off and only using HDR in natively supported HDR games. Save your eyes. Did you know you can also save your eyes by getting some glasses that help reduce eye strain? link in the description. Now, speaking of brightness and all that, the G8 Neo is also a 10-bit display, meaning it can display a whopping 1.07 billion colors. Billion. Now, for reference, 8-bit displays, which is the common color depth for most monitors, can only display 16.8 million colors. Million. I'm not good at math, so I'm not gonna do the math, but I think you can deduce that a 10-bit display will objectively look better, especially when it comes to images with a lot of colors. Personally, I can't say I've ever really noticed color banding in games, but if you do photo editing or watch movies on your computer, then having a 10-bit display is nice, and it probably is noticeable in some games, but it really depends on the title. Speaking of color, the G8 Neo comes out of the box, factory calibrated, and it looks fantastic. It's actually the first monitor I didn't feel the need to adjust, and trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm picky. Now, if you're going to be running Windows in HDR, I do recommend running the Windows HDR calibration tool to set a custom HDR profile, because the stock one seems a bit washed out in the blacks in my opinion, but running the HDR calibration app will let you set this how you like it. And it's it's super easy. It takes like two minutes. Uh, you can find it on the Microsoft Store and it's free to download. Any and all games I've played on this monitor, whether in SDR or HDR, have looked absolutely incredible, especially at 4K. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think HDR will be the next major advancement in visual fidelity for games. Something about extra bright specular highlights in games that support ray tracing really just make you feel that much more immersed, which in my opinion is what matters most when gaming. Not to mention the 1000R curve, which is just enough to give you that bit of physical depth you get when using a curve monitor, but not so much that you feel like you're having to turn your head to see different parts of the monitor. As far as viewing angles and the actual display finish, the G8 Neo has an anti-glare layer, meaning this is a matte display. This also means it has a pretty good viewing angle. However, since it's curved, you will see some color shifts, so I recommend sitting in the center to avoid any distortion or any of the color shift. Now, I praised the AW3423DW for having a glossy finish because there's something about a glossy finish that I can't quite put my finger on, but most of you will probably prefer the matte finish on the G8 Neo. I'm not bothered by it, but still prefer glossy finishes. I know, I'm the worst. I also like motion blur in games, so fight me. Another nice feature is the inclusion of AMD's FreeSync. Now, most gaming monitors these days either have FreeSync or G-Sync, so it's not anything special, but still worth noting because FreeSync does make a pretty substantial difference. This is also a reminder to turn off V-Sync in your games if you're using a G-Sync or FreeSync display. You're welcome. To be honest, there aren't many things about the G8 Neo I don't like. I mean, it's one of the top gaming displays in the market, so I would expect as much. Actually, most of my problems with this monitor are with the stand, and the packaging. Samsung, what the f If you guys saw my unboxing video of the G8 Neo, you'll remember that nasty, sticky plastic. Okay. That was covering the back of the monitor, some of which is still stuck in certain places. Thanks, Samsung. For the stand, while it supports all the normal movements, the G8 Neo felt extremely wobbly on that included stand. Not very confidence instilling. Granted, I immediately mounted mine after unboxing it, but if you plan to use this on the included stand, just be aware it feels pretty wobbly and offers zero cable management beyond this rubber strap thing that might as well be useless, because it is useless. Speaking of cable management, it's practically non-existent. The little plastic cover doesn't do much to keep your cables tidy, so that's a bit annoying. But as you can see, I don't really hide my cables anyway, so moot point. So to summarize a bit, the Samsung Odyssey G8 Neo is an excellent top of the line 4K gaming monitor. It has all the staples of a top tier gaming monitor in 2023. It may not be as colorful or as punchy as the QD OLED on the Alienware, but where it lacks in color, it makes up for in sheer brightness, which again, in HDR games looks absolutely stunning. At that rate, it really boils down to what kind of games you play most. I would easily recommend the G8 Neo to anyone who's looking to have a premium 4K gaming experience, hands down. 
But if you're not into single player games and find yourself playing more esports fast paced games, then this will probably not be the best choice for you. Sure, you can play at 4K 240, but I think you'd be you'd have better luck grabbing something at 1440p for much cheaper. The G8 Neo is definitely built with HDR in mind. So if you don't plan to play or use HDR, then you can probably find another 4K gaming monitor that's a lot cheaper that'll be just as good, which I'll mention the G8 Neo is $1,150 on Amazon and that's on sale. Uh, yeah, it's not cheap, but this is the best 4K gaming monitor we're talking about here, so what did you expect? Personally, I think the G8 Neo is the ultimate gaming experience in 2023, especially if you're like me and don't like ultra-wide monitors for gaming. The G8 Neo takes all the best parts of other high-performance monitors and combines them all under one roof without sacrificing practically anything. Heck, you can probably do some light color work on this display if you're an editor. Regardless, it's hard to argue that the G8 Neo is a fantastic display. It may be a bit expensive, but that's the price you pay when you're asking for the best of the best. It'll easily be my main monitor for the next several years to come, and I think it was worth every dollar. But that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, and as always, make sure to subscribe to see more content like this. I upload uh, about once a week here on YouTube, but you can keep up with me over on TikTok, Instagram, and X at XXIV underscore concept. That's 24 concept, learn your Roman numerals. And hey, let me know what you guys would like to see more of in the comments. I'm always looking for new things to review, so feel free to drop some suggestions. I'll actually be heading out to TwitchCon next week, so let me know if you'll be there. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hey, it's 2024, look at that. Check out the, look at the time it is, guys. It's 20, it's 20, shit. You're having a good day? I hope you're having a good day. I'm having an awful day, actually, believe it or not. Believe it or not, it's been an awful day, awful month, awful couple months, awful year, huh?